Recently, there's been this notion that Jupiter is Earth's big buddy. Every time that it goes on recess, apparently it is at school or something, comets come in and try to bully it out of its lunch money. But Jupiter shows up telling those comets to go away or he will eat them for lunch. That is the relationship that is known between Jupiter and Earth. But the thing is, it is a bit more complicated than that. You see, the idea behind Jupiter through its unbelievably strong gravitational field would take comets in and then throw them out of Earth's way outside the solar system was cemented in 1994 by planetary scientist George Witherell. But that was only for something called long period comets. In a more recent study, however, by and they found out that Jupiter is not exactly an impervious shield. Now, what they've had access to is technology in 1994, George did not have access to, which is, well, really fast computers. This allowed them to run simulations of solar systems with different Jupiters of different masses. Then what they've done is that they've attached 100,000 asteroid-like bodies and then ran those simulations for 10 million virtual years. Now, they did find what George found in 1994, which is that Jupiter does indeed protect the Earth from long-period comets. The problem is long-period comets are not exactly that much of a threat. Why? Because from the name itself, they are really long in terms of their orbital periods around the Sun. They take between hundreds to millions of years to make that orbit. The thing is, there are two very important bodies within the solar system that pose a threat to Earth as well. You have the short period comets, which take around 200 years to make one orbit around the Sun or less, and you also have the near-Earth asteroids, which are about this far away from Earth. Now, this might look like a very big number, but in astronomical terms, that's like breathing on Earth's neck. That, that's how close they are. To put that in perspective, long period comets are about a thousand times, at least, farther than that. Now, when it comes to short period comets, they found out that the number of impacts of a solar system with a Jupiter that has a current mass of our Jupiter and the number of impacts of a solar system that has a Jupiter of almost no mass did not really differ all that much. But the interesting thing here is, is that as this virtual Jupiter increased in mass to about 25% the current mass of our Jupiter, the number of impacts on Earth increased disproportionately. But the most interesting scenario is the near-Earth asteroid scenario. The simulations showed that in a solar system with a Jupiter that has almost no mass, the number of collisions was about 3,000. But as the mass of Jupiter continued to increase, you know, the same way that happened in, with short period comets, the number of collisions again increased disproportionately. And by the time it reached 20%, the number of impacts on Earth was about 20,000 collisions, which is absolutely crazy. After that, it dipped down to something like 10,000 if our solar system had a Jupiter of its current mass, you know, one mass of Jupiter. That still means that we are 3.5 times more likely to get hit by a near-Earth asteroid in a Jupiter-full system than a Jupiterless system. But with all that said, though, this is not 100% conclusive proof that Jupiter, well, is evil. It, it, it just shows that the relationship between Earth and Jupiter is a bit, you know, well, complicated. It might tell those big, bully, long-period comets to go away or he'll eat them for lunch, but it also might allow its friends, the near-Earth asteroids, well, to go nuts. And, and Earth might not really like that. So that's my take on why Jupiter is not exactly that awesome. And with that, thank you very much. One more thing, so something that has nothing to do with this video. Um, I've been getting a lot of comments about the fact that my accent is kind of weird. You know, it's not, you know, almost half the comments on the channel right now is about my accent. I didn't know I had such a very strong accent. That's a very interesting thing to me to know, to be honest. Uh, it's not the oldest channel in the world, and there's not a lot of comments, but yeah, I appreciate the comments, so thank you guys very much. Uh, I just want to say it's not really something I can fix. This is my own accent. It comes from being a Bahraini. I live in a country called Bahrain, and my main language is Arabic. Um, I try as hard as I can to explain things in, in, in my second language, English. I have very good vocabulary when it comes to it. Maybe my pronunciation isn't the best, but uh, I try. I hope it's not a very big issue. 
okay and uh, yeah you know, please please uh, keep watching if you can and if you have any comments or suggestions as well uh, please let me know that would be very helpful and thank you again for for watching all right so yeah screen's coming back now and again one more time thank you